Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Erin, I'm the Business Development Manager over here at Softree. Uh, with me today we actually have two presenters. Uh, first is Craig Spears, he is going to be giving us actually a, a rather detailed introduction to earthwork optimization and to what it is as well as the benefits of it. And then we're going to pass it over to Matthew Dickey. He is one of our support engineers. So a little bit of housekeeping before I pass it over and get the easy job of just uh, enjoying it like you yourselves. Um, first of all, the software that we're going to show you today, it is RoadEng, uh, but we're going to be focusing on an add-on that's available to RoadEng, and it's called Softree Optimal. Um, it is a yeah, separate uh, product add-on that we've got for the software, and that's really where the earthwork optimization uh, comes from. Secondly, the webinar, as usual, will be recorded and available on our YouTube channel after the fact. And third, uh, and probably most importantly, please engage with us throughout the webinar. Uh, we typically save the questions for the end, but uh, punch them into your GoToWebinar question portion there, uh, and we'll happily answer those. Uh, anyways, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Craig, and we'll get started. Thanks, Aaron. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Um, so what I plan to do is just give you a quick introduction to the optimization technology before we get into the, the demonstration. Um, so I've got a couple of slides here. So first question you might ask is, what is earthwork optimization? And it is a mathematically based process to determine the lowest cost alignment which satisfies constraints and standards. Um, key point here is that it, it is actually a technology. It's not just some sort of marketing buzzword, um, someone who says they've optimized your shopping experience or optimized your holiday experience. It's not, not that kind of optimization. This is really mathematically based. Uh, we have a patent on it, so it is uh, very tangible in that respect. Um, so what is what have we got? We've got um, both horizontal, or sorry, vertical and horizontal optimization stages. We'll talk a little bit more about them um, just now. Uh, it should be noted that horizontal optimization um, searches for a better solution. It does not necessarily find the best, but it, it is an automated. Uh, system to look for better solutions and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Uh, finally, horizontal optimization uses it. It sits on top of vertical optimization. The vertical, vertical optimization is the key piece here. Um, that's really what we've patented and unlike the horizontal, the vertical does give you and guarantees you the best solution. Um, and that's, uh, that's something that, that no one else, as far as we're aware, has done with a detailed design situation. So what does the process look like? Um, we start, user creates an initial horizontal alignment. Um, take that alignment, we enter some parameters, and then we vertically optimize it, and out comes uh, geometry a cost and also a movement schedule that, that is the optimal way to move materials around to achieve that vertical. And it will be guaranteed to be the lowest cost subject to your, your costs and constraints. Um, the next thing we would look to do is to, uh, to adjust the horizontal. And to do that, we set up some areas around each IP where the the IPs are allowed to move, and then we, we push the optimize button and go away for some time and come back, and a new improved alignment is found, and the cost should be less. Uh, it's not guaranteed that it'll be less. It's, a, it's, a, it's an attempt to find a, a lower cost alignment. So when that alignment is vertically optimized, you look at the cost, you look at the earthwork calling and so on, um, it should be less. And it, it does uh, work very well. Um, okay, the, the key 
component of this, as I mentioned, is the vertical optimization. And it uh, requires a little bit of setting up, but, but not a lot. Uh, you take existing ground. You take the preliminary horizontal alignment. Of course, you've got a cross-section geometry, which could be quite detailed. It could have all sorts of um, logic in it for things like retaining walls or variable cut fill slopes, all sorts of things. Um, you set that up. You set up costs uh, for material movement. And uh, let me just go through these. They, they, uh, yeah, you set up costs for cut fill subgrade surfacing materials, movement and loading costs, and other additional costs, colors, pit opening costs, clearing and grubbing. Um, the next thing you do to set this up is to look at the constraints. You have to have some uh, minimum maximum grades, obviously. Uh, you have a minimum K value that you want, as basically your design speed. And then you may have some other constraints in the way of control points, points that where you want the alignment to be. Uh, maybe you need to clear something. Maybe you need to go through a, a specific area because you've got a bridge site, those sort of things. So you can constrain the vertical alignment using the co fixed control points. Uh, you can do other things like full bench constraints. You can insist that on a certain uh, degree of side hill, you have a full bench cut. And you can also constrain the direction in which material moves. So if you're building a road and it's a virgin road, uh, you cannot move material forward, obviously, until the road's built. So you, you insist that the, the material be moved backward along the alignment. Um, so all these parameters, and there's, there's a few more, uh, get set up before the vertical and the horizontal is done. And from there, it's press a button, uh, vertical optimization, and again, out comes the, the geometry, vertical geometry of the road, the cost that, that would cost to, uh, to construct that road based on, on earthwork and the other costs. And a, a movement schedule, detailed schedule of where material gets moved to. So moving on to the horizontal alignment, horizontal optimization, you again have the initial horizontal alignment. You set up, as we just did, the vertical optimization parameters. And then into the horizontal optimization it goes and it circles around vertically optimizing and then moving IPs, vertically optimizing, and so on, until it looks like it's converged on a solution. That's it for an overview. Um, what does this really give you? Obviously, you can do some very quick, early stage planning of roads. You can get uh, ideas of costs, quickly get vertical and horizontal alignments. Uh, you can take a, an existing design, which you may think is perfect, and optimize it just to see what that looks like uh, compared to the optimal. That's very useful. And that really falls into this third point, which is a verification and checking work that you've done and believe to be really good. So you say to yourself, what is the optimal solution in this case? And it shows you something. It may be different from your design. But at least um, you have some feedback uh, from a computer telling you what it, what it thinks it should be. I mean, engineers have to deal with a lot of different situations. So this technology is not going to replace engineering. But it, it should help and assist you in doing engineering, making those decisions. Um, I think the benefits are clear. Uh, reduced engineering time, lower earthwork and construction costs. And finally, uh, that all results in better road location. So I'm going to pass over now to to Matt, who's going to demonstrate some of these things. Everyone can see my screen. Okay, so I've uh, put together a design. It's uh, started out as a traditional design. So I've uh, clicked an alignment. Um, it's a make-believe project. My background before working at Softries from the consulting world where I uh, uh, focused on uh, access design for the resource sector. So 
mostly mining, uh, before that forestry. Um, the example I've put together here is uh, it could be anything, uh, access for any industry. We're going to call it a uh, mine access road for for the sake of this, but uh, yeah, it could be anything. We have our uh, start of our alignment at point A here, um, which is on one existing road, and we want to tie into this other existing road at point B. Um, purpose behind this is, uh, as is, there's a, about a 15 kilometer uh, distance from here to here. If you follow the network, we want to shorten that down for a, a reduced travel time. Um, so yeah, let's uh, look at what we have for our design here. Uh, look at the 3D view. It's uh, coming down a bit of a ridge feature. Um, I've got a, a maximum grade of 10%. Uh, my K values equate to about a 50 km an hour design speed, so uh, minimum crests of 11, uh, minimum sags of 12. Uh, I've got a few pits in here. And uh, the template that I'm using is a fairly generic template. Um, we've got a, a road width of four meters either side, so an eight meter road. Uh, I've included material specifications for my uh, surfacing layers. So I've got uh, gravel for my first layer, and then uh, this WG, so I've called it a well-graded base for my top layer. Um, yeah, so if we look at this, I've also assigned some uh, different sub-horizons along my alignment. So I've got hard pan for the first 900 meters for the first uh, two meters of my uh, uh, sub-horizon, and then we change to gravel, and then shallower gravel, and then back to hard pan. Um, the software is going to track the movement of that material and uh, make sure it's balanced. And uh, We've also included uh, some pits and waste sites in this. Um, so even in my traditional design here, I've included uh, smart pits. So the software is choosing how much volume comes out of each of those pits. Um, I've got a potential waste site at the start of the road and then an access distance uh, 250 meters beyond that here. I've included a site prep cost to use that. And the rest of these are fairly similar. Um, so I've got four potential waste sites and uh, two potential borrow sites, uh, one of those being the source for my well-graded base material, and the other one being a gravel source. So without using the uh, optimal add-on, there's uh, optimal technology in RoadEng, and that being smart pits and uh, OptiHall to calculate how much material should come from those. And uh, yeah, we'll just... Click recost. It's going to recost and tell us how much this lime is going to cost to uh, to build. It's already been done, but so we've got a cost right now of 1.3 million dollars. That's driven by the costs I have assigned to my ground types. So I've got a cost for gravel excavation, uh, $12 per cubic meter, uh, placement $4 per cubic meter, um, my solid rock costs substantially more, uh, my well-graded one inch minus is uh, $24 per cubic meter. Um, the cost per cubic meter for handling is unique to the uh, materials, and then the movement cost is uh, shared amongst the materials. And that's specified here. We've got hauling cost, uh, $8 per cubic meter per kilometer, and uh, no loading uh, costs associated with free haul. And then uh, overhaul, $4 per cubic meter per kilometer, but it costs 60 cents per cubic meter to load and, and haul, etc. cetera. Uh, this is customizable. As you move these, um, it's going to move, or if you change your uh, unit cost, that's going to change what the break point is between your free haul and overhaul. Um, if you wanted to specify that by a distance rather than calculating uh, where that should break to minimize costs, you can do that over here. We'll just leave this as is. And uh, yeah, that spits out a cost of uh, 
1.3 million dollars cut cost about 1 million dollars and uh, we've got the pit prep of uh, 15,000 so it doesn't use all the pits that I've given options to use so that's uh, that's my by hand design um, it balances uh, with the pits um, I've allowed the material to move both directions um, it's fairly benign ground so dozer country I assume they can push material ahead for this example uh, yeah but of course the question is can we do better and uh, with optimal we can and we can as Craig said uh, mathematically optimize that so our first example um, we'll uh, use the uh, vertical optimizer uh, before jumping into horizontal optimization. So let's click here, vertical options. So here we can assign what standards the uh, the vertical alignment follows. Um, this general tab is related to uh, the sampling for the uh, calculation. So it's going to uh, create a band where your road could be. So the band is going to be 10 meters either side of this uh, via line one, so the design I put together by hand. Um, if you had another vertical alignment you wanted to base that on, I could have chosen ground if I didn't click in the vertical alignment yet. Um, yeah, and then, uh, so 10 meters either side of the via line one, and then it's going to check in 20 meter intervals, just because that's what I have specified here, along the alignment. Uh, we jump over to, and we're going to do it for the whole road, jump over to the standards tab, um, I'm going to use variable curves and tangents for this. So with this, I want uh, curves. So that's the same as my hand design. Uh, crest of 11, uh, sags of 12. Uh, my grade constraints are the same as the hand design. So uh, minus 10 to 10. Uh, I'm going to keep the same standards for the entire design. And this variable curves and tangents, I want my curves to have a minimum length of uh, 60 meters and a minimum tangent distance between them of 60 meters. Um, yeah, and then there's other options here. So if we wanted to have uh, no tangents, or if we wanted to allow the software to have no tangents bet between uh, curves, it'll create an even cheaper alignment, but it, it generally doesn't represent uh, what you'd want for a uh, road that sees a lot of traffic volume. Um, it might be applicable for a really low volume road or a machine trail or something of the sorts. Uh, here we can assign our control points. Um, for this alignment, I just wanted to make sure that my uh, end of the road was at the uh, surface of the road it ties into. So I've got my alignment set here, uh, elevation 4.3.8. Just pulled that from uh, the surface, and I've also assigned a grade control for that. So I want it to be uh, two percent, uh, climbing two percent to come back onto the, uh, the road there. Um, but I've allowed it a tolerance of plus minus two percent uh, when it does that. So I don't want to have a steep road coming right down onto my alignment. I want it to be zero or less. Uh, start of the road, um, it's just a, an existing spur. I don't care about grade control on that or if I sever access to it, so I just wanted to tie in right there. Pits, it's the same as specified assigned by range here. Um, it's uh, all been specified. Uh, the start, I've got 250, 250 meters away from that. We've got a potential waste site on this flat in the saddle. Um, Another potential waste site coming down the ridge on that flat. A potential borrow site down here. Another potential borrow site down here. Another potential waste site on this flat spot. And then we've got our uh, last potential waste site at the end, but an additional uh, 1.2 kilometers away is a flat spot that's appropriate. Uh, unit cost we've already talked about. We'll dwell on that. And then... Uh, Constraints, as Craig said, we can uh, control the direction that the material moves. Uh, we control it for the entire road with dot, dot, to dot, dot, or we could assign a specific range. Um, side cast, minimum fill, full bench, uh, yeah, same thing. We can control the, uh, the alignment in here. Optimization tab, uh, for some reason you didn't want your uh, 
uh, optimization to run to uh, the default settings. You could assign a minimum or a maximum runtime limit or a different optimization gap. Um, the solver I'm using is the CPLEX solver. Uh, display just specifies when this is uh, this alignment will be displayed, and then log tells us if there's any issues. So that's set up. I am going to run the vertical optimization. So I, I love, prefer to right-click on things. There's also the corridor tab to get to the same place. So I'm going to set this as active. I already run it, but uh, let's say cancel and process. So this will take about three minutes to run, um, just because I've done it already, and uh, let's see what it does. Matt, it might be a good chance to just explain smart fits a little more. I'm not okay. sure if everyone's familiar with that term. Yeah. Um, so the smart pits, uh, it's the software is going to uh, determine how much material should come from which pit. So rather than specifying a quick uh, fixed volume or the user iteratively going through and figuring out, okay, I've got this much of a deficit, uh, I'll assign this fixed volume. The smart pits will say, run the alignment. I've got a deficit of this. That's how much should come from the pit or should be wasted. And uh, it's got the optimal technology in there, so it's doing that to minimize costs. And, yeah, and right now it's going to optimize fairly quickly. Um, for this example, it's uh, what we see going on over here. It's uh, doing the processing of the cross sections, so it's just figuring out all the different uh, configurations. I just also add that there was several different choices of of curve types, and the one that Matt's picked generally will run a little bit longer. Um, although this part of the optimization, the calculation of cross-sections is uh, independent of that, but um, there is a, a quicker curves option, uh, and as Matt mentioned, it gives you curves that um, are probably better suited to lower standard roads or, or trail um, situations, but um, this, this part of it really depends on the length of the, the alignment and the spacing of the sections. Yeah. Uh, you said this was a 15 kilometer road, is that correct? No, no, this is just two kilometers. Uh, two kilometers, sorry. We've got our, two different, our di two different alignments here. Um, as is, if we stuck with the existing road, it would be a 15 kilometer uh, round trip. Oh, the, I see, I almost awesome. heard that, okay. Um, we've got one question here, uh, I think we can answer in the time. Uh, is it possible to control where vertical curves are located by station range? Um, that comes down to the, uh, uh, as Craig mentioned, the quick curves. There's also an option to use user-defined curves. So if you had a preliminary alignment and you set your IPs at, uh, say, the major break points along that, um, you could use that option, and the solver is only going to move those IPs to uh, optimize the alignment. I just I'd add to that that the user curves option is a really nice option in that it's it's very fast, and it's a way to check someone's design, uh, keeping their curve locations the way they had it, and looking for adjustments at those curve locations uh, to improve the or to lower the cost of the design. So it's it, it's fast and it, it's quite useful in that respect. But you do need curve locations. Yeah. And it should be wrapping up here shortly. And we'll move on to the next topic. So right now the optimizer is starting um, to search for a better alignment, the optimal alignment. As we see here, the optimization gaps uh, getting smaller. 
as soon as there is an optimization gap, you can actually cancel. What that's saying is that we're within, I can't read it, 2% 2, 2 of optimal. Uh, so at the best, it, it's looking to improve it by 2%. So if you're early in the design stage, you may not care about a 2% improvement, and you just cancel from here. Yeah. Uh, I, I think this is going to, yeah, it's finished. I stopped it, yeah. Oh, I did oh stop you canceled. It. Oh, yeah, but okay. it's, uh, I'll just recost here, and it's, uh, won't take long, and uh, we'll do a quick comparison of my preliminary alignment to this one. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, well, that's uh, processing, Matt. You've got a few more questions. You're always welcome yep. to, to pick off as well. <laughs> yep, I, it's, uh, I didn't think I'd have time to jump to that back and forth. So it's uh, done processing here now. And uh, yeah, um, let's compare our numbers. Uh, so this is giving me a cost of one point, almost $1.2 million. Uh, my by hand option gate was a cost of uh, $1.33 million. So in a few minutes, we've shaved a huge amount of cost off of our alignment, um, which is pretty powerful. Another useful thing about uh, Optimal is it allows you to really quickly explore the impact of changing your design parameters has on cost. Um, I've already run these, so I won't go through and recalculate and re-optimize, um, but I tried an option where uh, the only thing I changed was uh, I just changed my standards to 12% maximum grades, and that reduced the cost down to one point, or sorry, uh, 0.8 million. And then uh, I tried another one where I said, okay, what if we reduce the uh, K value to uh, three and four? So associated with a 30 kilometer hour design speed, and we are getting down around this uh, 0.65 uh, million dollars. So it's uh, yeah, a matter of minutes. It's nice to have that if you're consulting to go to the client and say, well, this decision will cost you this much. Um, yeah. So uh, while we have it up, let's compare. Uh, so I've selected my by hand alignment. So that's showing up in this uh, heavier pink. Um, and then uh, this other one is going to show up above it. So we can see the difference between the two alignments. Um, you see what I could have done better by hand, and uh, it makes sense. It, I think it's a reasonable uh, design, this uh, optimized one. Um, but we can ask that question again. Can we do even better? Uh, so. Uh, da, da, da. let's uh, jump into uh, horizontal optimization. So I'm going to add a new horizontal alignment. I want a duplicate from my by hand. It's going to grab the selected uh, vertical alignment uh, parameters. And let's click this optimization parameters. Um, so this, we can choose which IPs are uh, eligible to be moved around. Um, we can orient the grid. I'm going to turn this perpendicular only on just for a uh, quick talking point. So let's do that. Oh, and plan option, whoops. Horizontal options. Let's do another one here. So if I don't orient the grid, we'll potentially move two IPs around, our uh, potential location for that IP to be moved is anywhere within this box. So 300 meters is a, a big uh, area to move it. Um, if we go in horizontal options, 
optimization parameters, orient the grid. That box is turned to be perpendicular to the uh, perpendicular and parallel to the uh, IP. Um, if we go back in here again, uh, we can select a bunch of IPs. We can't select the first IP or the last IP. Those are considered fixed. Um, but I want to select everything else. Uh, for this example, I use the 300 by 300 uh, area. And uh, yeah, I wanted to set a minimum radius of 100 meters. So that's leaving a fairly flexible location for the IPs along the alignment. Um, this does take a, a fair amount of time to solve. Uh, you can see it's uh, based on what we've talked about. We've got the vertical optimization in there and then we've got all these potential locations for our IP to move to so the problem becomes quite large. Um, I've gone through and already run it so I'm just going to select this is our current and we can compare what's going on here. So Matt, you ran it overnight or it over a few hours anyway. Yeah, to, I, to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I started. Uh, I started near the start of the day, and uh, I checked on it in the evening, and it had stopped somewhere uh, between the end of the work day and uh, the middle of the night. So probably twelve hours ish for this. Um, but it's a pretty impressive result. So. Uh, I thought my alignment was decent. Um, the horizontal optimization has more than halved uh, the cost. Uh, so here I had a cost of, oops, set current. Uh, here I had a cost of that 1.3, um, vertically optimized, we're down around 1.2. And then uh, this, we're down to, uh, a little over half a million dollars and it's uh, adhering to our original grade constraints and k-value constraints. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of this. Um, another thing that I'll mention too is uh, I've had uh, Optimal in my hands for a while now and uh, when I was going through and clicking through the, the traditional design it was really tempting not to uh, just optimize it because it does become a a handy tool to reach for, a bit of a design crutch. Um, yeah, that's all I've got for now. Uh, Craig, do you have anything to add or jump into questions? Uh, no, I think that covers it pretty well. There's, yeah, um, yeah, you covered a lot of the details. Um, that's it. All right. Uh, so what do we have for questions? Uh, we've covered that one. Can you define unsuitable material locations to avoid? Um, yes, so that is uh, comes down to your material assignments. Um, let's see here. So assigned by range, you can assign a fill type uh, with optimal. Uh, it'll be uh, quality based. So if I had a section of overburden that I didn't want to say overburden or peach or something like that I could assign that for a certain range that is a quality rating associated with it uh, and let's go to that that's some costs you want worst um, and then yeah I just assign that I have a material that's better than that in my uh, in my uh, fill material so it doesn't get included in your mass hall I just, if I might add an admission that our unsuitable material handling works, is very flexible, works very well for a given horizontal alignment, but it is defined by a station range on that initial alignment. Um, I think that, you know, if you're moving the the horizontal significantly, you may, may be running into other materials. We intend to we intend to address that probably in in 9.1 um, or whatever it is um, in the coming months to make it horizontally more flexible in terms of materials. But as I say, the materials 
suitable and unsuitable can be controlled by station range and ground types. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess we'll jump to the next question. You did a 10 meter alignment search on either side of the location. Uh, can we do a 100 meter search? Um, yes, you can, but that 10 meters I was dealing with was related to the vertical uh, alignment. So that's uh, it's fairly practical for most vertical alignments. Um, with the, uh, you can narrow that down or make it as wide as you want. The sampling frequency along that band is uh, 32 uh, points. So the wider you get, the uh, coarser the gap uh, between each points becomes. Um, and yeah, from my experience, the uh, 10 is pretty practical for uh, what I've dealt with. Uh, the horizontal alignment. Uh, is more practical to have a, a, a wider uh, potential area to locate. Uh, can you get a detailed printout of your mass hall movements? Yes, you can. Um, has to be current. It has to be uh, up to date. So, if I want to print out. Uh, copy OptiHall to clipboard, include all that, it's there, and then I can just uh, paste it into Excel. Oh, there you go. And uh, da, da, da. Does the software allow materials to be sidecast instead of placing in, oh, in the road prism or hauling it to a waste pit? Absolutely. I kind of skimmed over that. Um, so in the vertical optimization uh, options in uh, constraints, there's a sidecast tab, and then we can specify uh, cubic meters per meter that can be uh, wasted along the length of the road. So that's your kind of a linear spoil site. Yeah, it's gentle ground. It's often a windrow on the low side of the road. Uh, oh, and a uh, similar question. Can the optimizer be forced to have a minimum fill height uh, for uh, muskeg areas? Absolutely. That's in the uh, same location, vertical options and uh, constraints, minimum fill height. So if you had a, a muskeg or bog that you wanted to retain a certain height above, um, you can capture that in here. Just uh, minimum fill height, say one meter, and from station 500 to 600. Add edit, same as the assign by range. Make sure you click the add edit, and then uh, that's a constraint. I won't run it, but it works. Uh, do you have to run a vertical optimization prior to the horizontal? Um, nope. And uh, what else do we have? What if you have no land to move to? horizontal line. Um, so that's, I, I think, uh, uh, so there's kind of two parts to that question. The site may be restricted. Um, as of now, uh, the way to control that is to control your, uh, the size of the uh, uh, boxes for your horizontal alignment. So. I just might make a comment to that. I, I don't not know that we've verified this, but I think if you if you cut your the size of your terrain model down into only areas where you can go, it probably will avoid them. Oh, yeah. um, that's sort of a theoretical <laughs> concept, but uh, it's it's again same as the as the unusable materials. It's, it's an area that we're going to improve on. And I think we're. I think we're to the bottom of the questions. So, um, yeah.
thanks for well, I'm uh, just gonna jump back in here Matt uh, just thank you as well as Craig for you know a really thorough overview uh, and presentation of, of vertical and horizontal optimization and what they can do for a project um, if you if anyone else has any other questions feel free to send them to us uh, over at support at softry.com that's uh, an email address you can send any questions to otherwise we hope you'll have a wonderful rest of your day uh, the video will be up on our YouTube page by tomorrow Thanks, everyone.